To convert your data into a chart to visualize your data graphically, go ahead and click anywhere within your table or data range, and then come up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Charts group, and got a lot of charts to choose from. You have your mm, pie chart or donut chart. You also have the line chart and the column chart. Let's click on that. And you've got the 2D column or the 3D. Well, let's go with the 2D and keep it simple. Select it, and there we go. Now, when you hover over it, you can see a four-way arrow. When you see that, click on it because it means you can drag your chart in any one of the four directions. I'm going to place it right here. And then to resize the chart, you get the resizing handles. So go ahead and hover over any one of those resizing handles until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then you can go ahead and click and drag it and stretch it either more horizontally or close it in more vertically and then let go. And then let's see if this thing checks out. So you can look at it down below and say that it got my books and MP3s. There's the books and MP3s and for the months. And you can see when I hover over it, that's the horizontal category access. If you remember your algebra days, the horizontal axis is the x-axis, and then up here, the vertical axis is going to be the y. So looking at this, we can see that on the horizontal axis, we've got the month of January, then we have two bars. The blue bar is for the books, and it goes up to 600. There's 600. And then the red bar is for the MP3s. It goes just a little past 800, which should represent 825. If you hover over the column, there you go. You can see the exact value, and the pop-up is 825 and also shows you the month, and it's for the MP3 series. And then to customize your chart, when you have it selected, you'll see over to the right, you get the chart elements tag, the chart format, and the chart filtering, which are the same things you'll find up here on the design and format tabs, the related contextual tabs for what we have selected here. So for example, like on the chart elements, when you click on it, it opens up the chart elements as opposed to coming up here on the design tab, going to the chart layouts group, clicking on add chart elements. You basically get the same thing here. But the reason why you may want to do it over here is because if you're not on the chart tools tabs, and you're on another tab, you don't want to click to get over to that, then just come over here and then click on it. Well, click on it to open it up. And you can go ahead and uncheck the accesses, in which case you don't get your horizontal or vertical access. So I can't tell the values of these things as opposed to checking it, so you can see both of them, the months and the total amount in sales. Now that's one level, the first level. The second level comes over here when you hover over it. You see that little triangle? Click on it. Pops it open to the second level. So if you want to be able to not just eliminate both accesses, but just one, maybe it's the horizontal, so get rid of the months, uncheck that, and it's gone, or bring it back. Then you have that level, the second level, or if you really want to get super detailed, as much as Excel is going to allow you to at this point, go to more options and it opens up the task pane over to the right when it comes to formatting your access. So you got the access type, automatically select based on data or text access. There's the vertical access crosses. There's the access position. You can have it between tick marks or on tick marks. So you can see by looking at the chart here how it's going to be on the tick marks as opposed between the tick marks, the months here. And then we've got the tick marks themselves. We can go ahead and expand that and scroll down. And then you can have the major type on the outside, which is on the outside of the chart. But if I put them on the inside, they'll come up here inside the chart. So if I click on the drop down arrow and go to inside, they're right on the top instead of the outside. I don't know if you can see that, so you may want to practice this with our exercise file. In any case, and then you can also expand that and look at the labels here and specify the intervals, the distance from the access, the label position, whether you want it next to the access or high above it. So instead of below it, it's high above it. That doesn't look good. It doesn't work for me. So I'll go ahead and hit undo, or you can choose it back to the default, which was next to access. And then when you're done with that, go ahead and close out. And then let's see the other chart elements. Click on it to open it up. And then we have data labels. Hover over that, and it gives you a preview of it over in the chart. You can see, oh, let me go back. Data labels. So if I check it, it adds the labels at the top of each column here. Or if I want to go past level 1 to level 2, click on its corresponding triangle. And say you want the labels on the center, inside, inside base. And you can just look over here as I hover over each one, how that's going to show. And then if you want the more detailed, level three, pick more options, opens up the task pane, and then you can just go ahead and go nuts in there. Let's close out of that because I want to keep it simple. And let me go ahead and click on it again and say that we don't want data labels. And then you've got the option for the legend. 
There's the legend, books and MP3s, uncheck it, disappears, but let's check it again. Now it puts it over to the far right, go ahead and click on the triangle, and you get the second level, let's have it at the bottom like we used to have it, or go ahead and click on more options, and again, you get more details in the task pane to work with. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Next is the format options, click on that to open it up, and you've got style and color. First of all, the style, go ahead and scroll through and find a style that you like and hover over it to get a preview of it over in the spreadsheet. Ooh, I like that one. Go ahead and select that one. You can see in the pop-up down below it's style 5 as opposed to style 4. Let's go with style 5. And then keep in mind again what you choose over here. It's got the same thing up here on the chart tools tabs, the designer format. So there's chart styles. You can choose them up here. You can also change the colors here or come down here with it open and choose the color tab. And you can see that the color for the first bar is going to be blue. Then it's going to be red. If I come down here, then you can go ahead and look over here on the chart and see that in the preview, the first bar is going to be blue. The second one's going to be green. And that's colorful palette two. I'll go ahead and select that one because that's very colorful. And then down below it says, how do I change these colors? Well, as you recall in an earlier training video, we learned about themes. And that's coming up here, clicking on the page layout tab, going to the themes group, clicking on the colors drop down arrow and you can select any one of these and you can see over there on the spreadsheet how it updates as I hover over each one of these and select it if you want to go with that. That looks cool. So basically I overwrote what I selected here with the theme color and that's fine. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. The filter. So if I don't want to see books and I just want to focus on mp3s then come over here and say I want to uncheck books and then come down here and click apply and then I just focus on the mp3s. Then when I want to bring the books back into play, check books of course, and then come down here and click apply. And we're good. And if you want to switch your data around, let's go ahead and select the chart again so we can get its related contextual tabs like the design tab. Go to the data group. Right now we have the months. I can go ahead and switch the data and say let's switch the books and mp3s to being up here then have the months down below so you'll have everything grouped by books and then by mp3s and within the books you'll have January, February, March and so on. So if I come up here and I click on switch column row data there we go we have everything grouped by books and then by mp3s and then within the books you got January, February, March just hover over any one of those to be exact and go okay that's MAR for March cool and then that's for April and so on and then also for the mp3s and you've got the legend here now that used to be books and mp3s which is now the month so what you see in blue or the first blue is going to be for January and it changes the color to February but again you can hover over them. I'm going to go ahead and hit undo go back to the way it was or you can go ahead and click on switch row column so we can go back to the way it was because you only have two choices once you switch it you can only switch it back Then let's go ahead and scroll down and do some additional charts here like let's click in here, come back up here, click on the insert tab, go to the charts group and let's do a line chart, click on the drop down arrow, do a 2D line, something simple, select it and well, that's pretty simplistic, I like that instead of working with the columns, now I can just work with the line and see where the dips really come into play here, more so with it. Then if I need the exact plot, go ahead and hover over at that point in time and you can see that that's the series fantasy, that point is for April. Instead of coming down here and trying to go, okay, it's right there. No, that gets over into May with the exact value of 225. And then we can go ahead and click and drag this up and then resize it so it fits it right there. And then let's scroll down. Then the last one here is not a table. So I can show you that it doesn't matter if you have a table or just a data range as long as you built the database correctly so it can distinguish between the column labels and the rest of the database. Then just come back up here, click on the Insert tab go to the charts group and for this small database I'll do a pie because with the number of categories that the values are being represented by it's going to be one for each pie slice and so there's only a few so that's easier than like a lot of pie slices so but then that's up to you but for me the donut or the pie chart works best for small databases with only a few categories so come up here click on the pie drop down arrow you can see the 2D pie preview down below 3D Pi or ooh, Donut, that's always fun. Let's go back to 3D, select it, and then we can go ahead and click and drag it around. And then if we want to resize it just a bit, eh, not too bad. Human Resources is going to be blue. And if I have a problem with the size of the color here, can, of course, go ahead and hover over the pie slice. And, okay, that's Human Resources. Gives me the value and the percentage of the slice. 
Well, that's fun. And don't forget, you can also come over here and click on the format option to choose the different pie styles or come up here for the, well, let me click off and select it again so I can get the related contextual tab design for the styles here and hover over each one. And that one's nice. Ooh, that one's got the legend over to the right hand side. This one actually has the percentages in the center. Ooh, this one's got the legend actually on each slice. And I'll show you later on how you can tweak that, customize it, and actually add the numbers to each slice and also the labels if you don't like what you see up here or you want a combination of such. So pick one, select it. Cool. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.